Welcome to our viewers of Hamraka TV. Uh, today, the Toronto Police has conducted an information session for the Somali Canadian community, and I have here with me uh, Officer Isabel Cotton and one of the coordinators and the person who facilitated this uh, session. Hi, welcome to Hamraka TV. Hi, thank you, thank you. Welcome here. Thank you very much. Um, so, uh, Officer, I wanted to ask you about uh, uh, why did the police decide to hold a session uh, within the community in Etobicoke here today? Well, we decided I've been working with the Somali community for a few months now. And uh, it's, it's a community that it's really, uh, uh, they are very tied together and really interesting. And the culture is amazing. And uh, it's something that with the Toronto Police Service, we, we need to see changes. And I want to make sure that people have the right information. We have so much information. We have so many services that we can offer. Sometimes it's a language. Uh, I'm from the French community and I will give session in French because we need to learn about the, all the services we give the Toronto Police Service. So for me that was really important to give the information session about the service that we can offer, like victim services always comes back. What kind of service do we have for our victims? So it was really important to have the right information. And again, we always say to people, email us, call us, contact us, and we'll give you more information about it. We had recruitment, we are recruiting police officers. We want to see so many people applying to become a police officer. It's an amazing job, it's a great job, it's a great job to work with the community. So that was one of the reasons why we had this session, because we are recruiting, we have the YP program. The YP program is for kids who would like to work with the police during the summertime. It's, it's a very good job. Uh, we have like the auxiliary program that we can come and work, uh, be volunteer and learn about becoming a police officer or work with the community. It's all about working with the community. And I find that this information is like a first step for us. It's to work with the community, having the community hear us, hear, and we want to hear the concern of the community also. So I thought that was a very good experience today because that was, we hear about your concern, now we take it. Now we can improve our service, we can improve the relationship. So I thought that was a really good session and again it's, it's a first step and we want to see more of this kind of information session, more event that we see uh, the Toronto Police Service working with the community. Absolutely, thank you very much. And basically, this is, I'm um, understanding, is the first, going to be the first session of many to come because there's a need. That's correct, yes. There's, there's a need, there's the, the really a need. And again, it's all working together. That's how we're going to do it. Amazing. So, some of our viewers would like to become police officers. So, what do you advise for a youth or somebody who's watching us now who would like to become an officer, especially uh, in uh, Toronto? Uh, for now, like I said, we are recruiting and uh, so it's online. So you have to apply it online. You have to go to a website, Toronto Police Service, and look at recruiting and apply now. We are, we are recruiting. Uh, we will be recruiting. Um, I don't have a number, an official number yet, but we will be recruiting a lot of officers. And again, like we are looking for diversity. Diversity is really important because if you look at the city of Toronto, it's so diverse and we need that. We need language. We need people that know the culture, so apply it now. Yeah, exactly, that that will that will be a great step uh, to help uh, with the with the with the next step. And uh, basically, um, as a, as an outreach component, what has to be done for for you to bring all these agencies together and uh, touch a little bit about the focus uh, group table at the Toronto Police. Uh, we have a focus table. This the focus table is um, different agencies working together, and we bring cases to the table. So we bring cases that are from the community, and we bring those cases to the table. And you have all those agencies working together, and those agencies will go and help the person. They have 48 hours to go and help the person with the consent of that person, and it's again, it's all working together and to try to help some people. Um, and if you want more information, uh, we can contact also Detective Brian Smith, who will be very happy to, uh, to give you further information. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Isabel, for coming. You're welcome. Thank you for coming.
So, Hallmark viewers, you've heard it here first. The police is recruiting. Also, those are the ways that uh, the Toronto police uh, session today that was held in Etobicoke uh, Community Hub was very important, and the uh, officer said it herself. So, language barriers, things that actually can touch our community, uh, that could be a help that people that look like us to be a police officers. So, that could uh, break all the negative uh, communication aspects, and we can move forward into more positive open communication aspects with the police. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Our viewers, uh, we're still continue with the session that was provided by the Toronto Police for the Somali Canadian community uh, as uh, an information session about the resources that are available to access. Uh, here we have um, Officer Brian Smith, uh, who is somebody who uh, is basically advocating for uh, that communication open line with the uh, organizations and the resources that are available uh, from when somebody gets in touch with the Toronto Police and how they can further their help. Hi, Officer Brian. And thank you and hello thank glad to meet you <laughs> same here so uh, could you please tell us about the uh, the table the focus uh, group table uh, that uh, uh, you are linked with um, as an officer from the Toronto police yeah, it'd be my pleasure uh, what focus Toronto is is it's it's a way to bring all the community agencies together uh, every week to deal with some of the worst uh, cases of, uh, of risk in our community um, so I work with my colleague for the city of Toronto and as well as a colleague for with the United Way and we work with these agencies uh, there's uh, signed memorandums of understanding there's contract about you know what each agency is, should be doing and we bring them together once a week each agency can bring a referral uh, as well as the police bring a referral to try to get people the help they need in the most serious situations. Okay, what if somebody uh, needs uh, help but they don't want the police to be involved? Uh, how can they access that? Uh, well, we have about uh, approximately 90 community agencies uh, that, that are sitting at these four tables. So, generally speaking, if somebody wants help from a particular agency, let's say it's mental health, they could approach that agency. And most people, one agency can give them can help them with what they need but sometimes some of these cases are so complex and the person needs multiple support could maybe addiction is uh, an issue as well maybe homelessness is an issue maybe employment so how do you coordinate all those resources at the same time so the way into this would be through your community agency that is part of focus most likely they can help you by themselves but if they realize that it's a little bit uh, beyond their capability then they will bring it to the table for the help of the of the full group Okay, uh, that sounds interesting. So, um, one of the questions that came from the uh, uh, the members and the audience that were involved here at the information session today, uh, if a parent, uh, a mother, or a, a, or a father that are concerned about their child from being involved into a gang and they're under the age of 18, what can they do uh, to get in touch with the police, for example? Well, there's a lots of different ways. One way, if um, if if they know their local community officer they can reach out to help from that officer and then that officer can be the referral and that officer there is a designate at the local police station here at 23 they, they would communicate to that officer and then that officer would bring that referral to the table just just to, just to tell the story they, I mean the person doesn't have to come to the table it's the officer telling the story reaching out for help we really want to see a lot of like more youth cases we do uh, get a lot of youth cases, you know, kids heading down the wrong path, possibly joining a gang. We really want to get those cases, and I know there's a lot out there, um, but but it's kind of hard to get the referral if we don't know about them. So whether you let you trust the police officer to bring that, or you trust somebody in one of the local agencies. Uh, there's a sense of fear within the community by the way they communicate with the police because of uh, negative um, introductions in, they have in the past or uh, some sort of uh, breakdown in the communication. What kind of advice would you give somebody who knows that there is something going on within their community? How would they approach it? And their fear is basically uh, uh, not to be labeled by uh, a group of gangs or, or what, what not. Um, well, if, if, they, if they do know their local neighborhood officer, and the neighborhood officer is a very unique program in Toronto, and we are expanding it over the next couple of years, we want to have an identifiable officer in each geographic. We have 140 geographic neighborhoods in Toronto. We want to have an identifiable officer in those. So hopefully, if they feel comfortable with the local officer, they can let that officer know. Mm -hmm. 
if they don't feel comfortable, um, you know, people can report things anonymously through Crime Stoppers, where it's 100% anonymous. So I do encourage that. But please let someone know, because if nobody knows, we can't do anything about it. Absolutely, absolutely. That's uh, fair enough. So, folks, uh, Crime Stoppers um, is an anonymous phone line that you can call. You don't have to mention your address or your f or your full name uh, to report any crime. Uh, my last question to you, uh, Officer Brian, is uh, basically, what are the numbers that of, of cases that you had introduced to the folks? group table last year and uh, let's give me a percentage wise uh, so four tables uh, four geographic tables across the city the local table here for Rexdale uh, between 100 and 120 situations a year and these are situations where the person may have been unconnected to any support services in their community and they've slipped through all the cracks and and the tables is the last opportunity to kind of reach out and, and support that person um, so across the city, uh, between 400 to 600 a year, new cases. That's Thank you so much for all the work that you do. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Um, our viewers at Hormaka TV, we're still continuing uh, with the session that was uh, provided by the Toronto Police for the uh, Somali Canadian community. And we have Rick Arujo. Um, I, he basically employs youth uh, uh, with the Toronto Police. Hi, Rick. Welcome on Hormaka TV. Hi, thanks for having me. Uh, thank you very much. Can you please tell us about uh, the programming and the, and the youth programming that you do with the Toronto Police? Sure. So the Youth and Policing Initiative, it's a program with the Toronto Police Service. It's a partnership between the Toronto Police Service, the Toronto Police Services Board, and the Ministry of Children and Youth Services. And together, um, they have a program that employs youth to work with us full-time in the summer, uh, 35 hours a week for eight weeks, uh, earning $14 an hour doing administrative and community work. We also have two after-school programs, one that runs in the fall and one that one runs in the winter and spring and those are part-time programs so students come in six hours a week with an additional seven hours of training once a month and they're just learning about the police service they're doing extra training they're getting uh, their first aid training getting different certificates that they could put on their resume so that when they graduate from our program they have more to offer for future employers absolutely so for a youth that's watching us right now and they want to become a police officer uh, what do you give what advice do you give them where do they start so to become a police officer, it's a little bit different than our program, uh, but to, to join our program, we might even have youth, we have youth that join our program all the time that are not interested in becoming police officers. They're just interested in seeing what the Toronto Police Service is like and getting that experience. So if there's a youth watching that is interested in becoming a part of the Youth and Policing uh, Initiative, it's a good thing they're watching right now because we're hiring. Uh, from January 4th up until February 4th, youth can submit their applications online on our website, uh, torontopolice.on.ca forward slash YIPI and they just submit their application and their resume and basically we're just looking for youth living in Toronto 15 to 18 years old um, that are interested in, in working with us. Uh, is there cases that um, you don't basically introduce uh, the teenagers to, maybe it's too soon for them, uh, that you protect them from within this program? For sure, everything that our students are exposed to is uh, stuff that we feel that they're, they're able to or that that they're ready for. Uh, so we wouldn't be having our students sitting in on uh, on, on anything that it, it's above what, what they can handle. A lot of the stuff they're getting is like safety information, uh, some presentations on, on uh, like past cases, uh, nothing that would be too much for them to handle. Awesome. So for parents that are watching and they're hesitant uh, from their youth to, to be joining um, anything like this, what kind of advice would you give them? Why is this important besides becoming a police officer uh, to keep like uh, the community safety in mind and all the, all the amazing training that your organization provides? So I can only imagine as a parent when you hear that your youth wants to work for the police service, the, uh, the type of reaction you might have as my parents did when I was interested in this program. Um, so this is a very safe program. Uh, our students are mainly doing administrative work and community work. Wherever they are, they have a police officer that's working and supervising them as well. Uh, but this program, it's really important uh, for the community because it bridges that gap between the police and the community. It's no secret that in many communities, the police and the youth aren't always on the same level. They don't have an opportunity to interact kind of eye to eye in a neutral environment. Either they've been a victim of a crime uh, or, or maybe they're in a situation where they were in the wrong place, uh, something like that. So with a program like the Youth and Policing Initiative, it's a great opportunity to have the youth come into our space uh, and work with the police officers and basically be partners. Uh, we all end up being, being the same. They wear the same crest that I would wear. They wear the same crest that a police officer would wear. And it really gives them that opportunity to have that conversation uh, with the officers. That, that's amazing. Uh, so uh, based on uh, like basically changing the narrative to a more positive one, there's a lot of black uh, Canadian youth that go through uh, police guarding as such and they have a negative uh, kind of um, the way they were introduced to the police in a negative way uh, how, how would this program help them 
So, like I was saying, a lot of the times when you have that first interaction with the police, it's not in a positive environment. We're giving them that opportunity now to meet the police officers, to have that uh, conversation, maybe to understand why it is Toronto Police does things the way that they do. Uh, and, and it really helps both. It helps the, a lot of the times our officers are just as surprised as our youth. So our youth will come in and be like, wow, the police officers are human, just like us. Um, and the same thing for the police officers. They'll have youth that come from these neighborhoods that maybe when they're patrolling those neighborhoods, the interactions are having aren't always the most positive but they're meeting these youth that are that are fantastic they're active in their community they're doing everything they can to help uh, other youth out or help seniors and, and they're getting that positive opportunity from the youth so it it really overall it's positive for everybody thank you very much Rick uh, for coming on our uh, TV no problem thanks for having me thank you uh, so our viewers there you have it uh, uh, this is uh, Shukri Guchir Harmaka TV Toronto thank you uh, our viewers at Home Market TV, uh, we have uh, an amazing officer, Muna uh, Tabush. And uh, Muna Tabush, of course, as you can see, she's not only a Toronto police officer, she's a hijabi Toronto police officer. Muna, welcome on Home Market TV. Uh, thank you uh, very, well, very much, uh, Shukri. And uh, thank you for having me here with you today. Oh, it's, it's, uh, the pleasure is all mine. Uh, as soon as I saw you today, I was very proud of the fact that I see a woman in uniform serving her community, wearing her hijab. This is amazing. Well, it's uh, not only amazing, it's, um, it's a good opportunity for everyone, uh, especially women with hijab. So please, we are recruiting now women with hijab. Let's spread this and hire more, uh, especially female with hijab. Uh, why not? There's lots of uh, other uh, uh, culture outside joining the police officer. Why not us? So please, whoever like to join, join auxiliary. It will give you more experience in life. And after the auxiliary program that you're going to join, you can go for police officer. It will be a very good opportunity for you in the beginning. That's amazing, Mona. So I want to ask you about the importance of the session that the Toronto Police held here today uh, for the community. Why is it important? It is important first, it's uh, uh, especially, like I'm talking especially about, about women, women because I'm a woman with hijab. Uh, first, if to educate our kids and to have more secure community in our neighborhood. Um, it's a very good opportunity for you to uh, join the auxiliary program. So, yeah. Uh, this session is very good, especially for us. Absolutely, because uh, our obligation as Muslims is already to do peacekeeping, regardless, voluntarily. So isn't it amazing to like basically be wearing the uniform and, and do it? Wearing the uniform, and especially the hijab and doing, we have to spread to all people that we are very peaceful people. Like wearing hijab and uh, uh, serving our community, it's big opportunity for everyone to spread that we are very peaceful people. Uh, uh, like ser uh, uh, helping our community and serving our own uh, people too. Uh, Muna, uh, there's issues that have been happening with uh, Islamophobia and sometimes uh, police carding with uh, women that look like you and I, like wearing the hijab while driving. Uh, what can you say about that? Uh, they don't have to judge. They don't have to judge about hijab because lots of women are uh, under hijab. There are very good women, not only women with hijab, even Muslim people are very uh, good and peaceful. Not everyone is uh, uh, like criminal. There is everywhere in all this world lo lots of good and bad people. So please don't judge if when someone is wearing hijab with me. We are very bad people. We are very good people as very peaceful people. Thank you so much, Muna. The last question for me to you is, as an officer who's wearing a hijab in, in your division that you work at, is, it, is every day like an educational piece for you? How do you interact with other officers? Oh yeah, of course. Uh, there's lots of details outside we can learn from it. Um, uh, like uh, there's, uh, like I said, uh, you go outside, you meet uh, new people, uh, you do lots of uh, community hours, and uh, like uh, oh, you're always taking experience from others. Uh, lots of nice. Uh, officers yeah so like I said lots uh, you can take lots of experience there's uh, uh, they respect me a lot at my division as long as I respect myself and I show him that we are very peaceful people so yeah
Thank you so much, Officer Mona. I, I wish you all the best. It was such a pleasure, pleasure to meet you. So, yalla ala Hormarka TV and hayallah ala kibab bi Hormarka TV. Yalla ala auxiliary wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. Shukran. Hormarka TV, shukri gutir Hormarka TV, Toronto. Dawa li ashta Hormarka TV, kusolo ala barnamish kena, Manta Toronto Police, awi husami information session in the Rexdale Community Hub in Etobico. Wa hai li chukta program ka Naima Mirai, o ah gabariyar, o rafta ini police officer na qatwa. Naima kusolo ala Hormarka TV. Haa, nikin Imra li laha, police officer ina naqwarawa, Manta wa husami ina, Toronto Police wa Manta ima, the information session ya qabain, dan li raha o shani tomsin jira ila la tin 29 jira, ina سکس و امادان و اطلاعاتی که پلیس این نقلان ایروان، سو آنیگا پلیس افرادان این نقلار و سو ما شاء الله محاکم کرد لی فکری داس. آذوقیار میاد تین این قطعه پلیس افسر مثل حد مرکع رکتی. پلیس فکر نیست حالا مرکع های سکول که گارا آد آد نقل پلیس این نقلار و این دن آفتر داد های سکول مرکع دمی پلیس فاندیشن است می دن آوز لایک کمیتی گاروان و قبتو أنا صوب حاروا بليس كذا أوج على الشقية five years ا volunteer كها BBC لده هو black consultant community حاوا five years ا volunteer volunteer كنينا هاي ما أنتوا حاروا إنا information كان إنا قبتاروا إن دتك سومال إن سو إمادان أو information كإن educate للسيو إن that's ها ما شاء الله so نعيمة وحاكو دلة كندا صح ها صح يا أف سومال إنه وكو هذا الشام ما شاء الله تبارك الله thank you صور حتى وكو هذا ها وحوي أبو حادي هذا وين أحسن مركو حيشة كتامه مدة إتهاي أمني جا إني سومالي ذا دليرت سومالي ذا كقب جلان قبر قبر يوي للبا. That's what حار target كي وحوا يقول كي وحوا دليرة أو سومالي ذا especially قبرها يوي لش ages fifteen إلى twenty nine group كاس إني صوب بحان community كل اللي لها بجريان especially Toronto police كوه وه وه وقاعدين سومالي there's no سومالي Police officer only like one or two, but we now especially in the community to help Well, how do you accent? But then the year to 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 the that's the reason why the reason why we have a program command Usman or how police can use money in a trust solution mostly to trust the police officer can trust Korean so that's why it's we can to below and I going forward we have a program within in a in a semen or that or the leader in a mother information or gather and please can help green and community get your services get a stand on to هذه هذا وما سنتها تاسنا وحي أهد نعيمة مري داوة دي عشر هرمك تيفي وأكو مهد سنتهين شاشة كان عنا قفير سان سان هرمك تيفي سبسكرايب برس لايك ثانك يو فري ماتش أنا قوة شكري 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 ق